Hey! You know, someone asked me in the Q&A video about how my process of making videos work, and after wondering for a while now on how I could make that video and how it worked, I finally figured it out. It's not possible. Well, at least not in an easy way. Every time I find a game to play, I just go with what I have at the time. And maybe after playing the game, I do some research on it with some cool facts or things that I can share with you guys. Sometimes I refuse to do any research at all because I don't want to spoil anything for myself or to take out a conversation that could happen in the comments. Even though people mostly use it to fight each other. But in this case, I was really wondering during gameplay, how much is this game trying to be another Crash Bandicoot? Was it trying to be a PlayStation mascot? What did they have in mind while developing this game? Have you told your mom I miss her? So I did some digging and found... Nothing. No, I mean it. Look at its Wikipedia page. Nothing. So I went to the second best most reputable source in gaming. IGN. The game was developed by Behavior Interactive and was picked up by Sony in 1997. Whatever that means. The game starts with a cartoony cutscene of Dennis, the kid with a pumpkin head, interrupting Dr. Narf to show him something that he captured. Doctor, doctor! Oh, Dennis, how many times have I told you? But, 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 look what I found! I hope for you it's not another rat, Dennis. I swear it's not! Look! It better not be! <laughs> a Jimmy Neutron looking devil which they wanna make experiments on. The devil then escapes and years later, monsters start attacking New Jersey and the now vigilante Jersey devil goes after the bad guys to beat them up. Most specifically Dennis, the kid with the pumpkin head. You get a small tutorial of how the game works, including having to collect the letters of the word NARF to open doors. We'll get back to that later. This is your hub area, where you can pick the different levels you go through, and after another tutorial, you are finally on the first level. Which also works more like another hub level, because here you can enter two more sub-levels inside of it. This is definitely the part I remember playing as a kid, and I'm sure some of you might remember this game because of this level. It works pretty well as a way for you to test everything you can do, like punching, spinning, flying, which I'll already tell you are all pretty underwhelming. The gameplay in this game does not flow as nicely as you would expect. Square makes you punch, which is basically useless because... Just look at the range. It's almost impossible to hit anything with it, and it only becomes more obvious when you learn to spin. Whenever you jump, you can press square to spin in the air as an attack, but it still doesn't have a lot of range. And you would expect to at least kind of work like in Crash, right? Wrong. Kinda? You do spin and it does hit your enemies. But they had this weird decision of making the enemies invincible a lot of the time, so you you can't just run around hitting enemies, you have to wait for them to attack and when they're out of the attack animation then you can hit them. It sounds pretty stupid, I know, but it is something that was done right more than a year before this game was released. So it's one of the many things that this game has that is just a little bit off, but off enough to be noticeable, like flying. They want you to use this mechanic a lot during the gameplay, but every time you jump, you press triangle to fly and instead of just going the way you want to, you have this small bump, like if you hit a wall before you can start moving. And that will sometimes lead you to some unexpected jumps. Oh, and speaking of unexpected things, why are so many death traps in this game? I can understand them wanting you to take the game slowly because being a budget game it doesn't have a lot going for it, but I was laughing at myself every time I got hit or instantly killed for something that I didn't even see. Not that you would have something to be worried about because the devs knew what they were doing and they give you a lot of lives during this game. I don't think the gameplay is horrible but it's very... uh tiresome. 
Some levels are straightforward and some levels have you going back over and over again. And they seem to want you to make a simple mistake so you have to go all the way back just to do whatever you were doing all over again. Considering this was a time where you weren't trying to maintain people in your game to sell DLCs and whatnot, it's confusing to why they would do that. Because the game could be so much more competent. Like remember the NARF letters you have to collect? Because of what I mentioned about the enemies, you will be inclined to ignore a lot of them in the levels. But sometimes you'll be missing one single letter and you'll be stuck looking for it for 30 minutes. Just to find out that you had to defeat one specific enemy in the middle of 4 others that was hiding the letter you needed. And of course, you cannot make any progress without those. The graphics have that same cartoony art style from before. I actually really like the character design in this game. And the levels have a huge variety to them. You go from a museum to a factory to a haunted mansion. It's pretty cool. But the game definitely lacks on some other places. Like you know when you leave your character idle for a while and he starts doing something? In this game, whenever that happens, the animations simply drop to 5 frames a minute. It really seems like something that they simply forgot to fix and it ended up getting released like that. I mean there's this boss that you can use after you defeat him to jump on his belly, but instead of having an animation for it, they just make you automatically jump, so it looks like this. I swear I'm not pressing anything. The whole game has this Halloween like theme, with pumpkins as collectibles and devil's tails as lives. And in between levels you will get Dr. Narf talking to you like... You! How did you get in here? <laughs> but the backgrounds can be very disorienting, because they move way faster than you would expect. And being a cartoony game, of course you have the cartoony sound effects like... <laughs> However, this game is actually very good in the music department. While I can't say they are some of my favorites, it definitely has some great songs in it and I'm 100% sure more people would praise it. If the game was any better. And that's the thing about this game, while I do have a lot of nostalgia for it, and the character has a look that stands out, it's just not very good to keep up with platformers of its era. Everything you see in this game has been done before and probably better, so I doubt to find a reason to go out of your way to play this one. Unless you have some nostalgia for it. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one, and if you did, make sure to leave a like, it really helps me a lot. And as always, a huge thank you for our new members. Alejandro Saldanha, Marcos Paulo, Javier Takashima Cota, Joe Lucid, and Francisco Fontoura. And also, last week I somehow missed two members, Pablo Doador and Thiago Moreira. I'm really sorry about that, I don't know how that happened, but you got your shout out. And also, if this happens to anyone else, please, please let me know, because, I don't know, YouTube's kinda janky on the members department, too. Yeah. But yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.